Welcome to Superstar Racing Experience, the game, the SRX game. This is a game that came out, uh, I think, today. I think today's the first day it came out, and I only found out about it a week ago. This is made by Monster Games, who most recently have been doing the Tony Stewart's All-American Racing, Dirt Racing games, Sprint Car games, and stuff like that. And those are those are fine. Uh, I think they also had a hand in NASCAR Heat, some of the more recent NASCAR Heats. And uh, this is definitely using an evolution of that engine, but I'm quite pleasantly surprised. It's not like me to take a look at a new game, and so why am I looking at this? This isn't really meant to be a review, but I'm actually pretty excited for the SRX. I think the SRX, I think for many, is kind of a hopeful homage to the IROC series, and I'm very fortunate to say that I'll be going to the first ever XRX race here in just about a month from now. SRX will be racing the first race of their season at the Stafford Motor Speedway, which is one of my home tracks, a track I've been going to for 25 years, uh, and I'm very excited to see how this how this goes there. I feel like the SRX has a little bit of an identity crisis with the mix of drivers and everything, but seeing as though they've put out a game that actually includes Stafford uh, and it being one of my home tracks, I thought it might be fun to actually just do some racing there. So like I said, I don't want to do a full review, but in this game itself, I'll jump into the quick race mode. You do have a quick race and a career, and in the quick race mode, uh, you can select between the different cars and everything. I think the career is kind of work your way up, although the SRX itself is an invitational series, so it's not like you're working your way to the top level of motorsport. It's, you know, it's kind of been marketed as a series for retirees or legends of the past, so a little interesting of a concept, but quick race itself, too, you can just fly through and pick the different uh, series that you want and it's an interesting collection too with 305 sprint cars i think pulled right out of the all-american racing game uh stadium super trucks which are fun uh but i'm not sure fit the whole vibe here uh late models which again another dirt oval series and then the srx and the srx itself all short tracks but it's a mix of dirt and and asphalt ovals and, and i believe this is the only series in the game where you're racing on asphalt ovals at all but still really fun if we jump in so we have the different drivers i thought it might be kind of fun to take richie Axelson. Now, let's pretend that in his older years, he's got invited to uh, race in this SRX series, although I don't know how old he would be. Uh, but for the real drivers, this this follows the set of drivers that's actually going to be in the SRX. And one of the reasons I'm really excited to go to the race, you've got Marco Andretti, of course, still an active driver racing in the Indy 500 as I'm recording this just in a couple of days. Uh, Greg Biffle, uh, Brian Brown, Elio Castro Nevis, Doug Kobe, local modified racer, races at Stafford all the time, so he'll be racing in the one I'm going to see. Uh, Bill Elliott, uh, surprisingly, Ernie Francis Jr., Tony Kanan, also active Indy racer. Uh, so the Indy contingent's really strong, which, of course, also interests me in it. I'm very eager to see how they do racing around a short track. I feel like it's it's really outside the wheelhouse of an IndyCar driver to uh, muscle these cars, this type of car, around a short track. But but I know Tony Kanan did the uh, Prelude to the Dream, which was a dirt late model race that Tony Stewart put on for a few years. Um, and he did okay. He didn't do it you know, spectacularly at all. But it's always fun to see a driver try something new. Uh, but continuing on, Bobby Labonte, he's going to be great at this, I bet. Willie T. Ribs. Awesome that they got Willie T. Ribs. I'm so excited to see him drive. Bobby Santos, another driver that races a lot of modified, super modifieds, uh, where I'm from. I think known a lot in the Midwest for racing USAC and asphalt USAC out there. Uh, Scott Speed, I guess he's on the good list again. Uh, and then Tony Stewart, of course. Cody Swanson, Paul Tracy, if he can fit in the car, we'll see. Michael Waltrip, and then uh, the Slinger winner, which I understand is going to be whoever wins the Slinger Nationals. So I found this kind of amusing. I pulled open the option pages where it explains how the races work. And I feel like they need this because it's a little bit confusing, but it's a three race format for the SRX. They've got two basically heat races where all of the drivers, from what I can understand, will race. But the first one is just a random starting order. So it's throw them out there and uh, see who can go the fastest. Uh, and then race two is an inverse finish of race one uh, for the whole field. And keep in mind, there's only 12 cars racing. It's one of the concerns I have with the SRX over. Overall, 12 cars can sometimes put on a really good race, but in my experience on some of these short tracks, 12 cars is not quite enough to have excitement for the whole thing. But races are short enough, and race one and two are actually timed. Uh, it's kind of interesting format. I mean, ovals themselves have pretty consistent lap times, so you can kind of guess how many laps the races are going to be anyway. But timed for races one and two. And then race three uh, is just based on the finishing order from race two, I guess. No inversion there, and it's a long race. I think 100 laps 
for Stafford, which is a pretty good distance race, about half the distance of some of the longer modified races there. There's a whole points championship and all that stuff, too. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out if if many of the drivers care about it. I have a feeling, I mean, it's something to go out there and have some fun, uh, allow the fans to have some fun to see some of their old heroes racing. All right, so I'll select old Richie Axelson here, and we'll jump into the track selection. And these are the six tracks that the SRX series will be taking place on. And so those are the six included, which is nice to see from what I understand the um, All-American racing games that this is based on didn't have any real tracks in them. So it's good to see real tracks. And the highlight for me is Stafford Motor Speedway, which we will uh, be going to race on. But you also got Slinger Speedway, High Banked, Small Oval, the Nashville Fairgrounds, of course, very high profile these days trying to get a cup race. Uh, the Lucas Oil Speedway in Indianapolis there, and then two dirt ovals, Knoxville uh, and Eldora, of course, Tony Stewart's track itself. So it'll be an interesting series. I was hopeful it was going to be three and three uh, dirt and oval, and I feel like I remember from when this was originally announced that they were going to have a road course, but it doesn't look like that's the case. So in the tracks itself, it's way different than IROC was, but IROC ended up being kind of a super speedway NASCAR type series. Uh, but if you roll it back a little bit, it started as kind of this eclectic blend of tracks they're even racing at like the cleveland road circuit and of course riverside they started off in porsches and raced in camaros and everything really cool series i'm actually going to take a look at that separately maybe as we get closer to the srx this is the little garage screen. You can actually adjust the setup, uh, and there's all kinds of custom setup options and things. I've been playing around with this too much. Honestly, for this track, the default setup feels all right, but I actually go out and do a couple laps of practice, and here's my first gripe with this. I'm, for some reason, starting on the grass next to the front straightaway, when Stafford itself has a pit lane, I'm actually looking at it here to the left, uh, and it's in the game and everything. You can't actually drive down it. I tried. You hit a wall in the middle of it, but for some reason, they're just not using the pit lanes on the tracks. I think some of them don't have pit lanes, but feels like that could have been easy to do. But anyways, we're all out of the pits and thankfully, or no pits, I guess on the apron. Thankfully, it can use all, all modern controls in this. It was very easy to get set up and I'll go out and say immediately that this feels pretty good. It's an arcade game, uh, but absolutely drives realistically enough that you can have fun. Something definitely to pick up and just race uh, when you want to do a fun race here and there for sure sure you don't want to take anything too seriously and the ai themselves pretty competitive but we'll come around here stafford motor speedway um, and here's the second gripe this is not not a very accurate stafford motor speedway and that's mainly disappointing because there's only six tracks in the game i thought they were going to have maybe a little bit more accurate and i'll actually throw a clip in right here of a very accurate version of stafford motor speedway for you to compare to and everything here it just feels like it has way more banking uh, and you cannot really use the apron on this version and in real life the drivers do use the apron and I think I'm nitpicking a lot if you uh, don't go to Stafford this looks close enough to it that it's plenty of fun but I've been going to that track for 25 years or so so it's it's very glaringly obviously uh, not accurate enough and again with there only being six tracks in the game I was hopeful it would be a little more accurate pick up the speed a little bit though and show you some of the handling we'll get on the apron a little bit there but the cars do race uh, somewhat realistically they move around a lot with the weight it definitely feels way better than a nascar heat uh, or something similar to that i haven't tried i don't think i've tried the latest nascar heat but even even the last one i did try and it was so hard to race somewhat realistically but this you do have to counter steer you do have to manage the weight uh, on the asphalt which i'm much more familiar familiar with i think this is a pretty fun arcadey type game on the dirt i found it pretty frustrating and i've got very limited experience on the dirt uh just some eye racing stuff which i can kind of catch on with i'm certainly not good at it but this doesn't feel anything like that so your mileage will vary depending on what you're into but for this it's actually pretty fun so apparently I didn't hit my practice goal time. I've cranked the AI up to 100%. Uh, so <laughs> it wants me to reduce the difficulty, but I'm not going to do that. We're actually going to move on to the next session here and do the first of the heat races. 
All right, so we'll come around and AI has control of the car right now, but we'll get it just as the green flag comes out. Shift up the gears. Let's see what I can do here. Three minutes, 40 seconds in the heat, so not a lot of time. And uh, stuck around the outside at Stafford is not the best place to be, but let's see if I can get it up the inside. Looks like I got Paul Tracy in front. I like how they gave him a pink car. I feel like that fits Tracy. Oh, bumping a little bit there to the side. And every lap when you go by, you get the time remaining. And once the time runs out, you have one more lap on top of that so that only controls uh, how many laps I guess are left overall but we'll come on the, under the inside of number two there I'm not sure who that is grab the apron a little bit oh, I'm not able to get back on the throttle car it gets a little loose coming out of two the car it's certainly not easy and you can definitely control the car which I absolutely love some of these arcade games especially the older NASCAR heat ones like I was saying it just feels like you're floating you're not really directly into control or in control of the car and don't get that feeling at all with this but up to sixth position and remember where I finish in this will basically just be inverted for heat two so unless they pay money or something <laughs> I'm not sure what the point ooh, what the point to finishing well here is we'll come up behind and Tony Kanan, he just come and get gets out of Axelson's way. It's not too bad. Up to fifth then. I mean, certainly pride is on the line, but if all you're going to do is start last if you finish first, then you don't want to finish first in this one. I don't know. Car gets a little loose there. Drives the wheel. Doing low 16s, so pretty quick. I ran a race here earlier just to test it all out and everything, become familiar with it, and I ran it slightly lower difficulty and was able to win, but not super easily, so I'm expecting a fight for this in the final race at least. I don't know if I'll get up to the front in this one. On the back straightaway, I think Elio Castroneves might be leading actually, which I I know he's going to put a lot of effort in. I'll be interested to see how well he does. All right, slowly catching this car right in front of me in fourth. We'll see, they do have their names on the back, and you can turn on name plates and everything like that, but I like to keep that stuff off. Just a minute to go in this, so probably four more laps or so. It's Doug Kobe in front. He'll definitely be quick if these cars drive anything like a late model or a modified, which seems like they will. But he's won oh, the NASCAR Modified Championship something like seven times, so <laughs> I think he's going to be one to watch out for at Stafford here. All right, just 40 seconds to go. Let's see if I can get around Kobe at least. the inside you can rub fenders and all that the AI do crash on their own and there are yellow flags and everything but it looks like we might get through heat number one here without any of that yeah the line you have to take because the track's not shaped exactly perfect is not not anything like they're going to drive in real life I don't think you would absolutely come into turn one and clip the apron and then drive the car up the track a little bit, but you want to take a later entry with this version. Kobe's right on my tail. Got a little loose coming out of turn two. All right, come across the line. Two laps to go. It changes to laps once the time runs out. One more lap then. So not a bad heat number one. Looks like I'll come away fourth. across the line all right so right into heat number two and you can see it actually gets darker which is uh, pretty interesting but starting back in ninth this time so i'll have to see how quickly we can get to the front but you might think the slower cars will be up front we're starting behind uh, bill elliott almost said chase elliott we'll come into turn one i do well, i said at the beginning of the video i feel like the srx has a little bit of an identity crisis and oh, so smack into the back i think that's kobe again we got a little loose there able to get around him i don't own the car so i don't care about it that much 
but nice close racing here. There's a bunch of settings that I didn't go through for AI that you can change how closely they all race. I left most of that on the default settings, I think. And Francis Jr. here, the inside. I got maybe Tony Stewart right behind me. I think he has the orange car. Oh, there we go, up the inside. Still behind Bill Elliott. He's able to get in front of me there, off the line. Just two minutes 50 to go. Once again, timed race in the second heat behind Marco Andretti. I'm excited to see Marco do it. I mean, it would be amazing if he's very competitive. He's got every advantage in the world being an active racing driver, still semi-active. We'll see. Bump him a little bit there, run around the inside. behind Paul Tracy now. Looks like we might be able to get to the front in this one, but there's a few cars behind that might have something to say about that, but I guess that's what's fun about heat number two, and what might be fun to watch out for watching the SRX is all the quick cars from the first heat, if they weren't sandbagging, are going to have to start from the back and work their way to the front. Uh, so it should be interesting to see if they can do it. Oh, the car got a little loose there. So just two minutes to go. I'm trying to chase down someone to see who it is once I get a little closer. Ah, Waltrip, Michael Waltrip there. He's definitely going to be good as well. I think he's lost a bunch of weight and everything for this too, so he's putting in the effort. fourth turn. So still have Tony Stewart right behind me. He's going to be looking to make a move. I'll try to keep him behind me. Where I finish here, I believe, is where I'm going to start in the final feature race. Oh, up the inside of wall trip. <laughs> there we go. On the low side. Knock into him a little bit. The force feedback is actually pretty good in this as well. Uh, tugs at the wheel. I turned off the extra effects. There's rumbling and stuff like that. I've got it just, just on the weight of the car. And um, it's great for an arcade game. I think this is actually a lot of fun. If it had more tracks and stuff, I could see myself spending a lot of time in it. But we'll come out of the second turn. So still, still out front. It looks like a gap Stewart just a little bit. Oh, touch the apron slightly. 38 seconds, it's just a couple more laps at least. Ride that seam on the bottom of the track. The banking, I mentioned it quite a few times already, but it's, it's because the apron in this version of the track has such a shallow angle to it compared to the track itself that you can't use it like you would in real life. It is flatter in real life, like you saw when I showed the iRacing version, but uh, it's still still not so far different that you can't get the car down there without really upsetting it. But here we go, we got two laps to go. I think I still got Paul Tracy right behind me. I'm gonna keep it in front of Paul. He's, de he's definitely gonna relish an opportunity to uh, race competitively, I can tell you that. One more lap to go. Looks like we may come away with a victory here for Heat 2, which bodes well for the final Heat. All right, but come across the line, there we go. All right, so I beat Michael Waltrip and Bobby Labonte there. Uh, so not too bad. Tony Stewart finishing in fourth and Elio back in fifth position. All right, so main event just throws you right into it. Uh, we're going to be starting in the lead, so it'll be interesting to see if this is just going to be a solo boring race or if uh, the other cars will catch up to me. But we'll give it my all here, get up the gears, oh, I hit in the rev limiter a little bit there in second, come down into the first corner on the apron, sliding a bit. Wall trip able to get in front of me. I guess it was Wall trip following me in, in the last race, not Tracy. But 25 laps on this one. So this one is all about the laps. It will be 100 in real life. I can imagine there'll be quite a few cautions, but we'll see if we get any in this version. Come down to turn three. Ooh, wall trip's pretty quick. And I think you can go slightly higher, uh, which I might want to do after after these races, but um, not too much higher. So hopefully they're not slow overall and it's just easy to beat the AI. But we'll see how it turns out while oh, cutting off the car behind. 
22 laps to go. Just try to get a nice run. Once the tires come up to temperature, get a little bit more speed. You do have tire wear and everything too. Oh, ball trip left the inside open. Easily able to take it, grab the lead. 21 laps to go. In the last race I did here, I did catch a few of the tail end cars as well, but I'll have to see if I'm able to stretch out a lead or if the car behind me is going to make this difficult. Very catchable slides in this as well. If you get the car sideways, just back off the throttle. Don't do anything too aggressive with the wheel. It'll right itself. Oh, as you saw there, and I smacked the wall. We got a car up the inside. Yellow car, who's that? Labani. Bobby Labani, like I said, I knew he was going to be competitive. This is right up his wheelhouse. Oh, and he's stretching it out a little bit too. The car's maybe I burnt up the tires in the second heat race. I didn't even think about that. We'll just try to calm back down, catch up to him, but he's stretching it out. late on the throttle there. You gotta try to float it in, but don't go too deep. It's not really worth diamonding the corner here because of the banking. Very smooth track, which again, the real life one is not nearly this smooth. All right, so 16 laps to go. It seems like I'm holding station with Labani now. So losing a little bit of time to Labani. I'm not sure. I think I burnt up the tires, which, again, I didn't really think about. So it's certainly strategy, at least in, if you're using the same equipment for, you know, two heats and the race, uh, that might be something to think about. Maybe you don't want to really push it through heat two then you won't have anything left for heat three and uh with how long this part of the race is i mean we're only doing 25 laps here but 100 laps that is more than enough laps to wear out some equipment we got nobody really behind me i can just start to see the end of the uh the cars there with, <laughs> with only 12 cars too so somebody's very slow but maybe labani catching them will slow them down a little bit Just under 10 laps to go. Still just holding station with Labani. I lose maybe a tenth or two here and there. But turning some of the quickest laps that I've turned so far. Oh, coming out of two. Tank slapper a little bit. Force feedback might be a little strong. Rip the wheel out of my hands. All right, let's try to get it back together. Once Labani catches the lap traffic here, if he gets slowed down, Maybe there'd be a caution coming to the end. I had cautions in the other races that I've done so far, so I'm surprised there hasn't been one yet. All right, Labani going underneath. I think Paul Tracy at the very back. Oh, car getting all kind of loose. Smack the wall again. Gonna have uh, Ray Everham fix something after this one. Not my car, though. I've got very little grip left, so tires have definitely worn out. I actually check the uh, tire wear. I got 80%, 76% on the right rear, so it's not as low as I thought it would be, but it's definitely noticeable. The car has a lot less grip. Four laps to go. Come around Tracy here. If you let us by, maybe give him a little bit of a bump. Oh, <laughs> he got so sideways. Held on to it, though. I thought he was going around. That's going to close up the gap to third. There, he finally lets me on the inside. Paul Tracy, a bit of his own medicine. All right, just a few laps then. So, I don't think I'm going to be able to get Labani, which is disappointing. I hoping to win this, but not a bad showing overall. Kind of a boring feature race, honestly. I was hoping for a little more drama. All right, we'll come out of turn four. One more lap to go. I think I'm catching Doug Kobe. Which totally is not going to happen. He's, he's not going to finish at the back. Cannot imagine that. Not around staff 
Stafford, but come out of turn four, complete the SRX race at Stafford Motor Speedway. So Bobby Labonte gets that win ahead of Tony Stewart, Elio Castroneves, Michael Waltrip, and Doug Kobe six. So I think it was actually Marco Andretti at the back. So not too bad overall, though. So Bobby Labonte got the win over myself, Richie Axelson there, but Tony Stewart finishing third. Not too bad. I, I mean, this is a fun game. It's, it's a good little arcade game. I think if I wasn't going to the race and wasn't so uh, trying to get hyped up on it, might not be might not be worth the full price. Might wait on this one a bit. But for what it is, um, you know, it's trying to make a game or trying to simulate this SRX series uh, in a fun game, and it certainly does that. I would absolutely die for even an, an indie car game of this quality uh you know but we'll see what happens someday so thanks for watching uh, excited to see how the srx does excited to go there if any of you are also going there let me know uh go to my twitter or something let me know but looking forward to it thanks for watching i'll see you all again next time